Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Extreme Performance Series video blogs. Today, we're going to be chatting with one of our Oracle experts, Sudhir. Sudhir, can you go ahead and introduce yourself real quick? Absolutely. Pleasure to be here. So uh, my name is Sudhir Balasubramanian. I'm a senior staff solution architect and the global Oracle practice lead for VMware. Been working in this Oracle technologies for the past 25, 26 odd years. So essentially, I'm part of a, a little SWAT team called the Business Critical Application Team. Primarily, I'm pre-sales focused. I also have a PSO background, right? Uh, but we get involved, our team get involved when it comes to anything that's uh, you know, concerns with customer POC or let's say customer escalations, uh, working with GSS or even with the performance team with Todd and with... Yeah, definitely. We've worked together uh, quite a bit over the last, I don't know how many years now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, and, and like you said, uh, you're all things Oracle expert, basically. You, you deal with lots of our customers on a, a regular basis. Uh, so I always like to have a chat with you and find out uh, what are the current things that you're working on and um, you know, what are you seeing out there with some of our customers. So I understand that you've been doing some work with PMIM recently. Can you, can you share exactly what that is with us? Absolutely. Uh, you know, even before we go into that, a little bit about the PMM technology, right? I mean, as all of us understand, this PMM technology essentially that resides, uh, you know, between the DRAM and the disk storage and the disk storage hierarchy, right? Essentially, what happens is you are able to address that memory chunk as byte addressable, right? And the fact that it's non-volatile, so it's persistent. So essentially, DRAM-like latency, you have DRAM-like bandwidth, and then you, have, you can use the regular low store instructions, the CPU instructions, right? Now, what happens is when you start looking at the persistent memory technology per se, right, it presents itself in three different forms, right? You have the app direct, you have the memory mode and the mixed mode as well. Where VMware vSphere comes into it is we can consume persistent memory both as in the app direct mode, essentially that's a guest operating system, DAX mounted file system, right? Or even as a PMM backed data store, right? So the recent two Oracle use cases uh, that we came up with, in fact, we did, a lo uh, we did a lot, right? But the recent two Oracle use cases we came up with was the 21C PMM file store. And that was essentially using the Intel Optane DC PMM in an app direct mode. And that focused on two use cases. One was accelerating the read log files. And the second thing is accelerating what's known as the Oracle uh, smart flash cache. So essentially, think of the smart flash cache as a, uh, as a level two or as a level three, as a level four cache for the Oracle SGA. So simply, simply by placing the redo log files or let's say placing the Oracle smart flash cache on a DAX mounted persistent memory, right? We are now able to accelerate the performance of the Oracle workload, right? And then one question typically customers have is, you know, one may ask why 21C or why, you know, the Oracle 21 uh, or the 19.12 version only, right? And why do we need to use what's known as the persistent memory or the PMM file store, right? I mean, will it work? Yes, it will work. But the key factor here is it will not protect against what's known as fractured blocks or tone sectors, which is important for Oracle databases or pretty much for any business critical application, right? See, what happens is PMM natively operates on a byte by byte basis rather than on a block construct, right? So data is persisted in chunks of eight bytes alone. Assume you have an Oracle 8K block, which means I now need to write 10, 24 times eight bytes, right? And while I'm doing it, if the power goes off or if there's any kind of problem, right, you are you end up with what's known as a fractured block or a tone sector. And that's what the persistent memory file store from an Oracle perspective helps you avoid. So Oracle 21C or 19.12 PMM file store using Intel DC opt-in PMM, using the platform that vSphere, the VMware vSphere provides in order to consume all of these. I mean, this is a awesome, you know, awesome technology from all three vendors, you know, come together. Do you know like an estimate of performance um, improvement when you're using PMIM in this way with Oracle? So, I mean, again, again, the test that we performed wasn't more, uh, I would say, a performance benchmark. It was more of a pseudo functional performance benchmark, but we really saw a phenomenal increase, right, in the performance. So essentially, by putting DDoS log files, your log files sync actually came down, right? You are able to push a lot of SQL. See, anytime we start measuring the performance of an Oracle database, we measure that in terms of execute SQLs, right? Or transactions, right? How much IOPS you're going to push, right? We saw these metrics increase phenomenally, whether that's accelerating DDoS log files or whether you're putting the Oracle read flash cache onto PMM, essentially, you're avoiding going down to the disk, the storage sector, right? You're able to read it directly from PMM. So the performance increase was phenomenal. 
And again, these are tests that's done in my lab, right? And I, like I say, I like to tell customers, right? Any metrics or any uh, results we see essentially is a combination of the, the hardware, the software platform, the test bed, the test results that we run. And, you know, metrics may change or results may change from, uh, I would say, test bed to test bed, right? But if I'm able to see those results, those phenomenal increase in my lab, Customers out there, you know, they have real world workloads, correct? And they are, those are like far more, uh, I, I would say, uh, expansive than what I have. So the, uh, you know, the performance uh, gains would be much more than what I can see in the lab. Very, very cool. That was exciting to hear. Um, great update uh, around persistent memory. Um, I understand there's also uh, some Project Capitola uh, work that you've been uh, involved with. Yeah, so essentially for viewers who may not have an idea as to what Project Capitola is. It's essentially a software memory tiering solution provided by VMware, right? That aims to provide a single address space. So essentially think of it, you have some DRAM and you have some persistent memory and essentially I'm able to throw a blanket on top of the DRAM and persistent memory and come up with the sum total of the memory. And the advantage here is, you know, you don't have, I mean, we as VMware admins or we as workload admins, we don't have to go and physically or let's say statically size our virtual machine and say, I need to get so much of memory from DRAM or I need to get so much of memory from PMEM, right? All we have to say is we need so much of memory for our virtual machine. And what happens is the workloads are fully agnostic of the underlying memory uh, hierarchy. ESXi exposes one memory uh, contiguous segment. So it's more memory capacity. So think of it, if you have DRAM as 1.5 and you have PMM as three terabyte, you know, that's essentially what I have in my lab. You now have a sum total of 4.5, right? So larger memory capacity, right? And ESXi will decide the placement of pages in the appropriate tier based on the active. So the hypervisor knows about the workload much better than what the hardware layer can actually do that for you. And that's just one of the advantages. There are many more to it. And uh, a quick a quick shout out. Uh, we are actually working on uh, the use cases for Oracle workloads using Project Capitola. We'll be showcasing this solution, the use cases test result at the uh, VMware Explore event as a breakout uh, session. So stay tuned. So yeah, we'll, we'll include a link to that uh, in the notes so people Absolutely. can go direct to that session um, once it's available. Yep. Very cool. Um, and then finally, I think that uh, we were talking earlier that there is some functional use case with Oracle Rack uh, that that you've been doing some work with recently that I, was was really interesting. So I'd like to like to hear a little bit about that as well. We what we did was we perform, performed the pre-validation of the deployment, the configuration of a two-node Oracle Rack. I mean, one could deploy an N-node Oracle Rack, but we did a two-node Oracle Rack on VMware vSphere, right, using NVMe FC protocol. Essentially, the storage array was a pure X50 flash array. We use Broadcom LP uh, 36,000 fiber channel adapters, right? And again, this work is pending official VMware engineering validation effort. But what we were able to showcase, what we were able to prove that, yes, using virtual NVMe controllers for those shared VMD cases using multi writer flag that actually comprises the Oracle Rack database, right? We can do that using NVMe over fiber channel protocol, right? So essentially we ran a lot of functional use cases. We were able to validate that, yes, the rack cluster is able to come up. The ASM disk groups are able to come up. Agents come up, listeners come up. The rack instances, they come up, right? And again, I'd like to take this opportunity and underline the fact that there is no difference in a way one would provision shared BMD case using multi-writer, whether that's a regular SCSI over FCP or even if it's NVMe over FCP, it's the same steps. So yeah, it's very exciting. And like you said, it's a, it's just a, a kind of a proof of concept at this point. We're waiting on official uh, validation for this, but things look great right now. And uh, so we'll be looking forward to the, uh, the official word on that. So I know this isn't all that you've done or are doing in the Oracle space, so how would, how would you recommend that people uh, get to all the information that you put out, uh, different ways to contact you? What, what is the best source for them? Yeah, so I mean, even before I get to the source, right, uh, there's a bit of a guidance I want to give to the viewers here, right? Essentially, when we start embarking on this journey to virtualize Oracle workloads on a VMware platform, right, essentially our recommendation, our guidance is please read the performance best practices guide for vSphere platform first. Understand your peak workload characteristic with respect to, let's say, the CPU memory, disk and network quadrants. Layer on top of that, the Oracle and VMware best practices guide. So that what happens is, you know, you are able to now inculcate best practice in every layer layer of the stack. And that's the reason that these guides are written, right? That's the reason why we wrote these guides, the performance teams are written the guide. These are lessons that have been learned and gleaned from the field. 
right? And customers definitely should, should take advantage of these collaterals. So long and short answer, uh, short answer to this, the Oracle uh, uh, one-stop shop, and essentially that's a link I think Todd will be providing. Uh, that is where anything and everything that we do from an Oracle on BMF perspective finds its way there, whether that's your best practices, Oracle RAG guide, whether that's your business continuity and disaster recovery. The best practices guides are key. And then the other stuff that you have on this uh, one-stop shop, Page are great as well. There's there's all kinds of great resources there, so yep. <laughs> it's a must must go um, if you're going to be running Oracle on uh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Well, Sudhir, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for uh, sharing with us what you've been working on lately. It's a great update, and um, with that, I, I'm going to say goodbye for the for the for the episode. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Thanks everybody.